we are going to be looking at number system. Okay, so concept of number systems and what it is all about. So number systems refers to the different types of numbers that we have and make use of in mathematics. You know, when you repeat mathematics, you have seen a lot of numbers and using addition, subtraction, and all of that. So what are these different types of numbers that we make use of? Okay, so we already have them here listed in the board. So we have the natural numbers, we have the integers, we have the rational numbers, we have the irrational numbers, we have the real numbers, and we have the complex numbers. Okay, so <coughs> what are natural numbers? So natural numbers are numbers that we give it symbol n. So we represent them with this symbol. Sometimes we also write it this way as our natural numbers. So we say that these are the counting numbers. Okay, so they are the numbers that we make use of in counting. And they start from 1, 2, 3, 4, to positive infinity. So we start from 1, 2, 3, 4, to positive infinity. So some people say that 0 is the natural number of course you can see that if you say it's the count, they are counting numbers, it is absurd to start counting with 0. I cannot want to count a list of things or maybe people and then I'll now start counting I'll say your number 0. So that, that is absurd. So that's why 0 is of course not a natural number. So some people also list whole numbers as one of the types of numbers we have. And amongst whole numbers now, they include zero. They are the only difference between natural numbers and whole numbers. However, we have just this list to consider. So the natural numbers are the numbers from one positive one, that is positive whole numbers. They start from one, two, three, four, five, six to positive infinity. Okay, so if um, uh, I say something like x is a member of this, so what I am saying indirectly is that x is a positive whole number, so it cannot be infinity or zero. All right, thank you. So after that, the next one is what we call the set of integers. So the set of integers are the set of numbers that include all whole numbers, both positive negative and zero. So they are given in this form. We have uh, say minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, dot infinity. Always remember that the three dots there is a signifier that it continues to positive infinity and this time it continues to negative infinity. So all of these give us a set of numbers that we call the integers. Present them with this z and the backslash and the center. Okay, so now after that, now remember if you watch this carefully now, you would you know correctly see that all of natural numbers are contained inside this set of integers. So that is to say that the set of natural numbers is actually a subset of the set of what? The integers, they are contained in integers. That is to say that every natural number is an integer. However, note that the reverse is not the case. Not all integers are natural numbers. For example, minus 2 is an integer, but it is not a natural number. Uh, it is a set or the type of numbers that we call the rational numbers. And so, what are rational numbers? We present them with this kind of cube. So we say that they are numbers that can be represented as fractions. Any number that you can write as a fraction is, is what is a rational number. So we say they are numbers that we can represent in this form, a over p, where our a and n are integers. Where our a and n are integers. So numbers that can be represented as fractions where your numerator is an integer, your denominator is an integer, is called a rational number. So we have examples of rational numbers. For instance, 2 over 3 is a rational number, 7 over, uh, say, 31 is a rational number, and anything. If you can
can also have, say, 21 all over half. 4 is a rational number. However, please always also note that, like I said here, that all natural numbers are integers. You can also see that all integers are also rational numbers. Why? Because you can represent any whole number at all as a fraction. For example, if I write 3, 3, I can say that 3 is the same thing as 3 all over half. One. So it can actually be represented as a rational number. So every integer is actually a rational number and, and, and so on and so forth. But that is to say that I can say that n is contained in z is a subset of z and z is a subset of what? My q. That's the set of rational numbers. Please take note of that. Okay. So now the next one is what we call the irrational numbers. Now, the symbol for irrational numbers is the Q complement. That means that irrational numbers, you know, of course, are just the complement of the rational numbers. They are those numbers that cannot be represented as fractions. They are the complement. So you either write it like this, complement to this form, or you write it this way. QC. Some people use this small c to represent their complement. So there are those numbers that cannot be represented as fractions. Example, for instance, your pi. Pi is an example of irrational numbers. And now the other thing you can also use to identify irrational numbers is that when they are in decimal form, they don't have recurring part in the decimal after the decimal point because now, for the rational numbers, if you have, for instance, 1 over 3, it's a rational number. And if you put it in decimal form, you're going to have 0 0.3333 and it continues. So you can see that 3 is recurring. So for a rational number, if you put it in decimal form, it will either stop at a point, for example, 1 over 4 is equal to 0 0.25. It stops at a point. 1 over 8 is 0 0.25. 1, 2, 5. It stops at a point also. So, that if you have something like 1 over 3, which doesn't stop, it continues. If it is a rational number, then it must keep repeating a particular set of digits, either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 digits. So, for example, for example, if you have something like 22 over 7, some people, uh, you know, think that 22 over 7 is not a rational number because we call it pi. Now, in those cases, you see that we say take pi. That means it is just an approximation. 22 over 7 on its own is a rational number because if you take this into a decimal form, you are going to get 3.142, I think around uh, 587. So it keeps repeating. Another one, one, four, two, five, eight, seven. So it keeps repeating these six set of digits continuously and in a recurring form. So it is a complete uh, sorry, a complete rational number. So any number that cannot be represented in a decimal form, such that if digit repeats or if digit stops at a point, is an irrational number. For instance, your pi. If you press your pi in the calculator, you're going to get two point four one. Uh, one, four, one, five, and continuous different digits to keep coming up until infinity. And so other examples of irrational numbers uh, are all basic sorts, all basic sorts, like root two, root three, root five, root seven, all of these ones, etc. They are all examples of irrational numbers. The next set we have is the, or the next type of number is the real number. We represent them with this symbol R. And so we say that this one is just a combination of all the irrational numbers together with what? The irrational numbers. So when we combine all rational numbers with the irrational numbers, you will get a set of real numbers. So every number, whether you are rational or irrational, you bring them together, that gives us a set of real numbers. That means the set of real numbers includes whole numbers, whether positive or negative, it includes zero, it includes fractions, and it includes all also other numbers that cannot be represented as their fractions. Okay, so that's what we call our irrational.
which are now on the sorry, on the real numbers. Okay, so after that we have now also note that this issue of containment that we have here that n is inside z and z is inside q. Now your q is inside what? Inside your r. Okay, and finally we have the sixth one, which is the complex numbers. The complex numbers we say they are the numbers that you can represent in this form. They have they are a combination of the real part and the imaginary numbers. So you have A plus B R such that A and B are, are real numbers. Such that A and B are real numbers. So numbers that are this form, for example, and where do we get this from? You remember that when you have numbers, for instance, you have numbers like uh, 4. If you take the square root of 4, you will get 2. And if you take the square root of 16, for instance, you get 4. But what if you take the square root of negative 4? What will you get? If you check your calculator, you see that this is going to give you a part error because there is no square root for negative number. And so what did we do? So what we saw is that this now led us to the type of numbers we call imaginary numbers. So we decided to split this into root minus 1 times 4. Of course, this and this are the same. And this gave us root of minus 1 times root of 4. And then we decided to give a name to the root of minus 1. And then we said that let root of minus 1 be equal to I. This I is called complex identity or imaginary identity. So uh, I, I gave us that as root of minus one. And so that is to say that our root of minus four is going to be equal to I times two, which is the root of four. And that will give you two I. So this gave, gave rise to the set of numbers that we call the imaginary number. So for instance, if I have 2 plus, let's say, 2i, this is a, um, a complex number, where in this case, my a is equal to 2 and my b is also equal to 2. So there are other examples, you can have minus 1 plus 3i. In this case here, our a is equal to minus 1 and our b is equal to what? 3. Now, Meanwhile, note that if I write a number like say minus 4 r, this is also a complex number. In this case, what is my a? This guy can also be written as 0 minus 4 r. That is putting it in this form now. And so here now, my a becomes what? 0. And my b is equal to what? Minus 4, which is the coefficient of what? i. Okay, so now, what does that show us? So the implication is that I can also say that even any number, any real number, is also a complex number. How? Because 5, I can write as 5 plus 0i. And that is true. So and if that is true, that means my a is equal to 5 and my b is equal to what? 0. So that means every real number is actually a complex number. In that case, that means I can say that all real numbers are also contained in what? C. So in uh, you know gathering everything together, you will see that N is contained in Z, Z is contained in Q, Q is contained in R, and R is contained in what? In C. So that gives us a whole six types of numbers, including the Irrational numbers. The irrational numbers and rational numbers are placed together. They go this way. So these two are contained here, and this one is contained here. So that gives us the six classes of 